scooter. Got him! Ah! The fishing is really, really good. Oh, it's a wow. white fish. White fish. Oh, geez. Oh, 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 my God. Awesome. That's a nice fish. Nicely nice done, buddy. That's what made me the best fisherman of the trip. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Hi everyone and welcome to the Fishing Canada show. If you're a regular viewer, you may recall an episode a little earlier this season where Pete and I attended a big fishing event shot in the province of New Brunswick. In that episode, we teamed up with Eric Lindros and his Easter Seals Hockey Tournament fundraiser and auctioned off not only that New Brunswick trip that Ange mentioned, but as well a trip to an awesome fishing and golfing destination in the Muskoka region of Ontario. And that's what today's show is all about. We weren't sure how a second fishing package at the same auction was going to do. But much to our delight, it couldn't have gone better. The second trip went as quickly as the first. This package went to three men in the banking and financial world. And the good lads that they are, they included one of their buddies to make it a foursome. Now, Ange and I are no brain surgeons, but we kind of figured that bankers would probably love golfing as much as, and maybe more than they did fishing. And we were right. So the Skins and Fins team of Scott Lawrence, Brian Velvasori, Andrew Lefeuve and their bud Mike Bourne was formed. The location for this trip could well be called Picture Perfect. It seemed tailor-made for a golfing and fishing combo. Our home base is going to be the luxurious Port Cunnington Lodge on Lake of Bays in the Muskoka region of Ontario. At Port Cunnington we have a multitude of styles of cottages so you can go as as small as one bedroom like the Chickadee. Uh, you can do the Hummingbird which is two bedroom cottage. Um, then you can move up to a three bedroom at the basin of where the lodge is. We wrap around 18 acres around the water's edge. So we provide docking, which is nice. I think the fishing's good, a smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, there's, there's trout. I think you can get white fish in this area as well. We typically open the Wednesday before Victoria Day weekend, May 21st, and we go to Thanksgiving weekend. The golfing portion will take place at the exclusive Big Win Island Golf Club, which is smack dab in the middle of a stunning island on the same body of water. So here's how this show is gonna play out. Since Anz and I feel we're slightly better at fishing than golfing, we're gonna let the boys go out and put 18 holes under their belts, while Anz and I hit the lake to try and locate some fish. As an FYI, we've never been on Lake of Bays before, and we've only got one day to figure things out. Big Win Island Golf Club, a Doug Carrick designed track, is consistently ranked as a top 20 course in all of Canada. As the name implies, it's situated on a beautiful 520 acre island surrounded by pristine waterfront. And as Ange and I figured, these banker boys are quickly feeling right at home on this challenging course. I'm about as amateur as you can get in the golf, uh, but uh, listen, Big Win uh, is a place I've heard about for years, uh, and it certainly lived up to its reputation. I mean, absolutely perfect uh, course, beautiful conditions, and honestly, postcard-type shots uh, of the course, so just absolutely beautiful. It's a really well-designed course with some very interesting features. And when you leave, you, you definitely can't wait to come back. And not all golf courses leave you feeling that way. That was my first time playing, and I played a lot of courses in Ontario. So to have the ability to access that was fantastic, and it totally lived up to its reputation. We thought it was really, really great. Maintenance was top-notch as well. I think it was the hospitality that was really, that was really awesome. Ha <laughs> ha! 
As the boys do their best to break par, Pete and I, as we said earlier, are out scouting around. For this, we're using our newest Princecraft boat. However, since there will be four more bodies fishing with us tomorrow, along with our technical crew, we brought good old FNC-1 to the party as well. For our scouting mission, we're simply looking for some easy picking smallmouth or whatever else will bite. The species doesn't matter to us, and our guests, they're good with anything. This is where good mapping and fish finding electronics come into play. When you have a short time to work, they can be indispensable. Tell them, buddy. Okay, yeah, now we see if it's smallmouth. Yeah, right there, I told yes, you. Yes, it's a smallmouth. <laughs> yeah, all you. right, that's all we need to know. That's the color right there you need. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, if it's any game fish, but it'd be better for smallmouth, it might be more predictable, right? Oh, for sure. If it was sure. a walleye, if it was a pike, as long as the boys get some. Yeah, but smallies, I think, is what, uh, yeah, what we... Yeah, we'll uh, get numbers of them, right? Yeah, what we're aiming for. You there you go. Nice. You know, that's a nice fish, too. You know, yeah, if we can get chunky. an average of that, I think everybody will be happy. Yeah, for sure. So we're on uh, Lake of Bays, and we're doing something a little bit different this week. Uh, yeah, we're fishing for the Fishing Canada show, but right now we're scouting. We're scouting areas because we've got uh, four gentlemen that'll be joining us tomorrow, and they're golfing it. They have the privilege of golfing it, and tomorrow they're gonna be fishing smallmouth bass, obviously, yeah. with us. We've never been on the lake. Nope. Neither one of us. No, sir. And we thought we'd take a day or two prior to uh, being joined by our guests to see if we could put something together because we want them to get into fish. Only two of the guests actually fish oh, on a serious yeah. note. Yeah. The other two either don't fish at all or have marginal fishing experience, which will make an interesting dynamics for us because yeah. Yeah. we'll have both Fishing Canada boats out tomorrow. That's right. Um, That's right. Two, two guests on one and two on the other. So it'll be kind of an interesting uh, setup for sure. This is kind of a typical would you say a Muskoka area lake, Lake Trout Lake. So it's got a lot of deep water. It doesn't have a lot of structure that we can find so far. We, I think we have to remap it almost, the whole lake. Well, we don't have time for that. So we look for obvious spots. So this but right here- This is interesting. Is like a, it's a, that's narrows area. So any lake that you fish, if you're fishing, if you're looking for fish, a narrows area is a good place to start. So we got a marker buoy here, marker buoy on the other side, and two big points that come out. It's a classic piece of structure, you know what I mean? And, and so we just came over here, we ran the uh, Garmin's, saw some fish, we said, hopefully they're smallmouth, and it didn't take long. And by the way, right now, you're looking to the east. This is a straight east wind down here. So normally that's bad, but in a narrow area like this, it can become good because it creates a current. And the other thing about it, it's been an east wind for about three or four days. So the fish are starting to get used to it. That first day of the east wind might not be so good, but now, and then it's gonna stay another east wind for two more days with the boys. So as you saw, the boys had an outstanding round of golf on a world-class course. But soon after all the bragging was done, their minds turned to fishing, and man, were they gung-ho. Since Ange and I came up with only two decent smally spots, a game plan is extremely easy to put together. We'll hit the furthest area first, and then work our way back towards the lodge. The first area was about a 20-foot deep, soft bottom flat. We know the fish are there, we just gotta catch them. Yeah, Holy shit, that's a big fish! That's oh, wow. Bottom, buddy. It's nice and easy, nice and easy, nice and easy. Nice to be. Adam, boy, Scott. Bring him back now. You guys just bring him back this way a little bit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, oh no. Shit. Man down. Back up. Got him. Ah! Oh, wow. Woo! No, that's, really cool. okay. that's like a Perfect. four pounder. It's a nice one, boys. <laughs> almost wow. fucking died. Almost died in the process. <laughs> hey, nice. Nice, nice job, partner. Woo! I got excited on that one. Picture time, for sure. Bike and, and that was it. Set your stick down. Yeah. And then show that camera right there, buddy. Woo! Here goes Scotty. Nice. All right. Perfectly done, buddy. Now you get to release it. All right. That's a nice fish, bro. That's a beauty. Big brownie. Woo! Ha, 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 ha. Sorry, wet hands. Good, right? That's good. Although that didn't exactly go according to plan regarding numbers of fish, Scotty did catch a beauty of a smallie to keep all the boys pumped up. To be honest though, this was supposed to be our number one spot. 
So far, the fish gods are coughing up lemons. Time to head over to spot B and make some lemonade, we hope. So I was a little intimidated by the whole thing. Obviously, uh, the, the group, the Fishing Canada guys, made us feel so welcome. That definitely set off a great tone to start. Actually, it was educational for me to learn that much about fishing and has, has to be honest, lit a little bit of a fire in me. Oh, it's a white fish. The fishing is really, really good. This is a bottleneck area that we saw a few fish in yesterday. Two big points that jut out into deep water. We'll all start out on the same side and work from there. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. Well, I'm pretty weak. Oh, oh it's a wow, white fish. White fish. Whitey. Look at that. Go ahead. Oh. Try it. But how, on the gills or? No, not on the gills. You want to hold his body somehow. Oh, but see. you see all the slime? Yep. He'll just. Look at the slime on it. Oh my God. <laughs> Here, Here, a little point it to the fish. camera. Ooh. Nice. So during this outing, both Ange and I had an eye opener as to just how powerful or maybe fulfilling the sport of fishing is. Without us knowing, Brian, one of the guys in my rig, started the day out with no indication as to any issues he could or would encounter on my boat. He didn't look for any special attention or treatment. He just wanted to fish. His story, well, it's pretty incredible. For me, having, having uh, being visually impaired and, and sort of being legally blind from my early teens. You know, I've had a long time to adjust through life and life skills and working and everything like that. I grew up fishing with my grandfather in Northwestern Ontario. And, um, you know, that was a great experience. And for me, fishing wasn't just about catching fish. It was about, you know, the experience of being out and being with the people you're with. My tactile senses have become a lot, uh, a lot more sensitive and I rely on them a lot more. So I found in fishing, especially this, the type of fishing we were doing with that uh, drop shot fishing, um, understanding, you know, it was an educational experience for me, for sure. Uh, understanding, so I would kind of visualize, you know, my line going into the water, being told, you know, keep the weight on the bottom so the, the lures um, hang. So I visualize that. You guys got the fish finders and everything like that. So I have to go in there and get the fish and, you know, having, uh, being fully sighted or visually impaired in that, it, it's a great sport for, for people who uh, challenge yourself or just have fun in a different way. So I, I absolutely loved it. Okay. Get him in the net. The jumper. Looks a little better, maybe. Nice. That's a nice fish. Nicely done, buddy. Nicely done. Show that. You can't help not help to catch fish when you're with these guys. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. up on the rod yeah. and then reel a little bit in at a time to let your rod spring them in. Nice fish. There's another one underneath it too. Did you guys see that second fish? He's coming up. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, get it. Oh, there we go, baby. Nice work. Oh, that's nice. Looks like Ange is hogging the prime real estate. No surprise there. So I'm going to motor over to the opposite side. It's a point very much like the one Ange and the boys are working, a nice sandy flat that drops off into a deeper channel. And just like the other side, it's loaded with smallies. Good job, buddy. Good little fella. 
That's a nice fish. It's a good one. Easy. Come on, go with this one. Yeah, a little. Easy. And you're going back to I like it. I like these hot jumping because I usually win. Oh no! It's usually when they spit it out. Nice, nice work. Beautiful, bud. Thank you. Oh, great. Wow, I great think beauty. Nose is right to top. Where he should be. That's the nice thing about drop shotting. They yeah. generally get pinned right in the nose. That's perfect. He's not as big as I thought, but that's a nice spot. Oh, that's a beauty. Not beautiful with the sun glistening off it. Magnificent fish. This hotspot is a narrow down area on Lake of Bays in the Muskoka region of Ontario. The waypoint on your screen will put you right on it. This is an easy one to find as there's a red channel buoy directly adjacent to it. The unique part of this hotspot is the big extending sand and rock point that juts out from shore and then plummets into deep water. This is an ideal area for smallmouth bass as well as an array of other game and bait fish. Bottom contacting baits like drop shot rigs, tube jigs, and Ned rigs are made for spots like this. They'll catch fish all day long. However, if you plan to be there at sunup, throw some topwater baits on top of the point and work them out to the drop off. The bonus to this hot spot, if you go directly across to the other side of the channel, the green boy is marking an almost exact replica. Both areas produce fish for us. For more hot spots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. That's the, that right there is worth the whole trip, boys. Let wow. me tell you right now. Look at the belly on this get thing. A, get oh a good grip. God. Get a good grip. Oh, yeah, baby. Wow. <laughs> good stuff. Oh, that is worth the price of admission. I'm telling you right now. Nice job. <laughs> so Mike has done wow, something a little on, different. Buddy. Good work. He's done something a little different. We, we've been catching fish right off of this little break that we found, and it's loaded with fish, and we've caught fish after fish after fish, but now they've died down. The bite is off. And I noticed Mike was casting out a little bit farther into the channel and, and dragging it back. I'm assuming those are suspended fish that you're yeah. getting, right? And all of a sudden, boom, bigger fish, better quality, and uh, the bite's back on. Let's go. Coming into this knowing that we were going to be in the presence of greatness. And I, when I say greatness, I'm talking about the Fish in Canada team who put their heart and soul and passion and everything they do into fishing uh, and presenting it to people. I knew that there's no better opportunity that could present itself to an angler or a non-angler to absorb and sponge and, uh, and observe as much as possible and I'm passionate about fishing, so I was excited about stealing any tips and any special ideas from you guys to take it back and use it on my own, and I learned a ton. Looking good, <laughs> looking real good. Oh! Easy does it. Easy does it. Now, he's not as big. I don't want to disappoint you, but he's not as big as the last one. Oh! <laughs> Nice. Nice. He jumped, the hook. jumped right in the net. Nice. Oh, look at that, right in the top of the mouth. Nice. nice. That fish just jumped right into the net. Thank God. <laughs> oh, that's oh, gorgeous. Oh, that's a nice one. Woo! Wow. Who would have thunk it, huh? Who awesome. Thunk it? Awesome. Well, there's a pattern right here. It's yeah. To be so they're up a little bit and deeper. They're keeping it up off the bottom yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. 
Ooh, nice jump. Well, that's a good size of it. Nice one, buddy. Just sort of don't reel them, just kind of pull and then reel. Pull a little bit and then reel. Okay, easy. And we got them. Yes, good sir! Good work, buddy. Ready. 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 Nice, look at that, perfectly hooked. See that, that's what you want to hook them by. Right there in the top of the lip that's, like that. That's the way. Off rail like that. That's the way I roll. <laughs> that's the way you roll. Set that rod down and then take your fish and Get release. the money shot. Take the money shot. Show that to the camera. That's the way you start fishing. Put them back ah, right there. Right. Right. Dry. Okay, fellas, go tell your friends we're here. <laughs> Well, there you have it, folks. That's what you get when you put some fun-loving, crazy fishing dudes in an outstanding fishing and golfing venue together, all working to raise a bunch of cash for a great cause. Our thanks go out to the Eric Lindros Easter Seal Group, John Siddle at Port Cunnington Lodge, and all the wonderful folks behind the scenes there who pull it all together. And a special hugs and kisses to our newest good friends, Brian, Scott, Andrew and Mike for being such a great bunch of guys. Thank you, boys. Getting There, brought to you by the Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast Network. To get to today's action-packed destination, we first drove north on Highway 400 to Highway 11. Next, we turned right on Highway 60 and then veered right onto Highway 35. We finally turn right on Fox Point Road, which eventually turns into Port Cunnington Road that ends up at the beautiful Port Cunnington Lodge. This unique destination is located on the shores of Lake of Bays. Port Cunnington Lodge is spread out over 22 scenic acres and offers a wide range of lakeside accommodations. Port Cunnington has a lakeside dining room located in the main lodge that has been serving guests the finest meals for over 100 years. Combine this with a day on a world-class golf course like Big Win Island and you have the making of the ultimate getaway. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Rinse Craft Boats, the spirit of boating, Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in, and Ontario Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure. Come on.